Our Jew, can you be my stuff person today? Good. Here we go. We have stumped our Jew. What we're going to do is we're going to take our Jew and we're going to strap him to the bottom of a plane. <laughs> it's going to be a prop plane because, darn it, it's much more fun that way. There's little things spinning. It's just exciting. Okay. So we're going to take our Jew. By the way, this is all hypothetical. Art. So we're going to take, we're going to strap you to the bottom of the plane. We will, of course, provide you with a helmet and some sort of face shield and perhaps some sort of something else. But of course, you will have a cape. If we're going to strap you to the bottom of the plane, you must have a cape. What we're going to do is we are going to fly the plane at a constant horizontal velocity. of 160 meters per second. Arju, what is your favorite type of gel flavor? Uh, cherry. Cherry jello. So we're going to place a giant vat of cherry jello on the ground over here. And we're going to fly you at a constant height of 1.00 kilometers above the ground. And the question is, where do we need to drop you such that you will land in the giant vat of cherry jello? What is the displacement in the x direction that will cause you to land in the vat of cherry jello? Ash, how do we start? That's what we're trying to find. I agree oh, okay. with that. I agree with that. That's where we're going to end. But where, who can tell me where we should start? Frank. With the givens, but even more specifically. <laughs> Trevor. With the givens for the x direction and y direction. We have an object flying through the vacuum that you can read in both the x and y direction. Yes, class? This is projectile motion. The first thing you do is you list what you know in the x direction, and you list what you know in the y direction. So we have the x direction. We have the y direction. So please tell me something we know in either the x direction or the y direction. Katie. Um, the displacement for the y is uh, 1 The displacement in the y direction is 1.00 kilometers. Great. Other things we know, please. Claire. Um, the acceleration in the x direction is zero. We know the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero. What I'm going to write instead is that we have a constant velocity. <coughs> just the same thing, but I'm just trying to identify specifically as a constant velocity. More stuff we know. Brad? The velocity in the x direction is 160 meters per second. We know its value. The velocity in the x direction is 160 meters per second. Our June is going to have a velocity in the x direction, going to stay constant at 160 meters per second. More stuff. Eric. Um, is it delta y uh, negative? Why is the displacement negative in the y direction? Huh? Why is it negative? Because it'll be one. Remember, displacement is a vector and has both magnitude and direction. So that displacement, because he's going down, is going to be negative one kilometer. Great. Tina. We know our June is an object in free fall, therefore the acceleration in the y direction equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Frank? Uh, the, velocity the velocity final for our June does not equal zero. This is an important thing to realize. The velocity final for our June does not equal zero. It's a common thought that it will be. I agree. After he slams into the vat of jello, he will stop. Right? But we're not talking about what happens when he runs into the jello. We're talking about what happens when he's flying through the back of the chicken brief. We'll run into the jello later. We're not there yet. Chapter four involves running into the jello. Yes? The last stage of the shell is equal to 160 meters per second for the y direction. The initial velocity in the y direction is not 160 meters per second. Important thing to realize, the initial velocity in the y direction is not 160 meters per second. Who can tell me what the initial velocity in the y direction for our June is? Zero. Zero. Okay. 
the initial velocity in the x direction is 160 meters per second. We have our June. Nope, we have the cape. So our June is flying in this direction, and he's going to be dropped like so. So notice, as he's flying, right at that moment when he's dropped, is he moving up or down? Is he moving up or down? At that moment when he's being dropped, no. So his initial velocity in the y direction is equal to zero. Right now, you should know we have enough to move forward. Who can tell me how it is we know right now we have enough to continue on? Tina? In which direction? In the y direction, because we have uniformly accelerated motion, we know we need to know three variables. We know three variables. How many variables would we need to know in the x direction to move forward? Three. Mike? Two. Going back to the equation, you have velocity in the x direction equals delta x over delta t. There are three variables there. So if you know two, you can move forward in the x direction. If you know three, you can move forward in the y. So we have three in the y direction. Remember, we're solving for the change in time, so we can use that in the x direction. So what we not want now is the change in time. Please, Mr. Carpenter, help us figure out the change in time. velocity in the y direction it's zero we know a change or we're looking for a change in time the displacement in the y direction is negative one kilometer plus the one half times the acceleration in the y direction negative 9.8 times the change in time we're solving for the change in time mr carpenter the negative one is kilometers we need that in meters right we have meters and seconds here we need to have this also in meters so we'll convert we have one kilometer on the bottom one thousand meters on the top you should be aware that this is negative 1,000 meters. So we need negative 1,000 meters here. Solving for change in time, we multiply both sides by 2, 2 times negative 1,000, divide both sides by negative 9.8. That's equal to the change in time squared. Therefore, the change in time is equal to the square root of 2 times negative 1,000 divided by negative 9.8. change in time, 14.28571 seconds. Ben, what now? Um. Back up. Come back to what I introduced for projectile motion. Why did we find change in time? Why did we? Yes. Yeah, but the question didn't have to do with how long. I mean, Arjun, you're going to have just over 14 seconds to ponder life before you slam into the vat of cherry jello. That wasn't what we were trying to find. We're trying to figure out how far in front of so that we don't miss the vat of cherry jello. It's an important question. Frank, help him out. Because remember, the, dis the change in time is independent of direction. It's a scaling. So we found the change in time in the y direction so we can apply it to the x direction. Coming back to the x-direction, we know the velocity in the x-direction equals the displacement in the x-direction multiplied by the change in time. Our goal is to get to the displacement. Risha, how do we figure out the displacement from this equation? What do we do? Risha, 
We're trying to solve this equation for the displacement, the delta x. How do we do that? Sorry, you're, you're missing the question. That's okay. He's not understanding the question. Help us out. Who can help us out just to Christy? We have the velocity equation right here. How do I do that? Multiply the whole equation by the change in time. Change in time cancels out. We get the delta x equals the change in time multiplied by the velocity in the x direction. Again, the change in time is independent of direction, so we can plug that in here. We get the displacement in the x direction equal to 14.28571 multiplied by the velocity in the x direction, 160 meters per second. The displacement in the x direction. 2285.713. 2285.7136. Okay. With sig fix, 2,300 meters is the answer. So we need to make sure we drop our June 2,300 meters in front of the vat of cherry jelly. But now we're going to teach our June about sig fix. Notice that this means that we know this number ranges somewhere between 2,250 point something slightly above that, because we need to be slightly above that, and 2,349.9 repeated. Right? According to sig phase, anything between those will round to 2,300 meters, which means if the vat of cherry jello is less than 100 meters in length, we stand a chance of missing the vat of cherry jello, even if we do it from 2,300 meters, right? Sig figs. Important in some situations. I would suggest if you ever do try this at home, and don't ever try this at home, that you have more sig figs in your known values. Plus, there's this whole issue with air resistance, so you would actually end up so, don't want to do this. So, yeah, we, do, we go through some of this in AP, but no, please don't try it at home. Two. So, you're supposed to draw them when the plane is. When the plane is 2,300 meters in front of the vat of cherry jello. So, it's like that. Yeah, so when the plane is right here relative to the cherry jello, so that it'll fall and land in the vat of cherry jello. That's part A. Part B. What is Arjun's final velocity right before he slams into the back of cherry jello? Alejandro, we're looking for the final velocity of Arjun right before he slams into the back of, of cherry jello. Can you see you on the question? Go ahead. Velocity final equals velocity. Hold up. Am I doing it in the x direction or the y direction? The y direction. So the velocity final in the y direction. In the y direction. Uh, equals velocity initial in the y direction plus acceleration in the y direction. Change of time. Great. We know the initial velocity is zero. The acceleration in the y direction equals negative 9.8 times the change in time, which was the 14.28571. The velocity final in the y direction of our June right before slamming into the vat of cherry jello is. June's final velocity is 140 meters per second down. David. Uh, I have a question. Good. So we should have questions. Um, what do you, you wouldn't necessarily be falling straight down, right? True. It's going like, that way. So right. Should we have to find out, like... So this is not the answer. Yeah. 
This is Arjun's final velocity in the y direction. Absolutely. But David's absolutely correct. He's still moving in the x direction. So if you look at it, we have the final velocity is just going to be a hypotenuse of the final velocity in the y direction and the final velocity in the x direction, where the final velocity in the y direction and the final velocity in the x direction are both the components of the final velocity. Look at that, we get the review. One wonders why we did it last time, where we learned this stuff. Okay. So, Karen, how are we going to actually let's start with this? What's the final velocity in the x direction of R2? No, I'm asking for, I want to know, we know the value of the final velocity in the x direction for our June. I'm asking for, what is that number? This is not zero. Again, after he slams into the vat of cherry jello, he will stop, but this is before he slams into the vat of cherry jello. Your shot. 160 meters per second, right? Because remember, he has a constant velocity in the x direction. So this is not just the velocity in the x direction, it's also the velocity final in the x direction, the velocity initial in the x direction, the velocity middle in the x direction. It doesn't matter, it's the velocity in the x direction the entire time. So in order to figure out the velocity in final for our June, what do we need to do? James? The Pythagorean theorem, which is? Why do we know we can use the Pythagorean theorem? We have a right triangle. Great. So the final velocity squared equals the final velocity in the x direction squared plus the final velocity in the y direction squared. Therefore, the final velocity equals the square root of the final velocity in the x direction squared plus the final velocity in the y direction squared. We have all those numbers. The velocity final is equal to velocity final in the x direction, 160 squared plus the velocity final in the y direction, negative 139.9996 squared, the square root of the velocity final. to uh, positive or negative, Trevor? Um, should be negative. Okay. Negative 210 meters per second. Fair shot. Oh, uh, should it be positive? Uh oh, shouldn't it be positive? Hmm. Truth is, the positive or negative isn't the question. Eric. Say one direction. We have to identify the direction. This is the final velocity. Velocity is a vector. We have to identify the direction. So this is going to be at some angle. We need to figure out that angle right there. Lindsay, how are we going to figure out that angle? Um, we're not going to use a compass. We're not oh, going no. to use, Sorry. No, um, we're going to use something. We are, in fact, going to use trig. Um, let's see what you use. So it's a plot. A triangle right here. Okay, um, and we're solving for... Theta. Um, What is opposite theta? Um, velocity initial in the x direction. Velocity initial in the x direction on the hypotenuse. Um, wait, is velocity initial? No, I, you said it right, I okay. wrote it wrong. Go ahead, velocity final in the x direction. Over velocity final. Therefore, 
theta is going to be equal to the inverse sine of the velocity final in the x direction divided by the velocity final. We know both of those values, so we are set. The velocity final in the x direction is still 160. The velocity final, we got to be 212.60289 theta. Eight point eight one four is plenty, and that's in degrees. Therefore, over here with two sig figs, we have forty nine degrees, and we need to identify the direction. Now, notice this is not a north, south, east, or west question because this is an up, down, left, right question. So this is going to be forty nine degrees um, in front of the negative y axis. We have to identify it that way because this final velocity right here, if we set up our axes right here, this is our positive y, this is our negative y, this angle right here is going to be in front of the negative y axis. That is the final velocity. Don't worry, that's only part B. Part C, where is the plane when our goon slams into the vat of cherry jello. Uh, it's not slamming into the vat of cherry jello. It has the same displacement in the x direction. So, look at it this way. We have the equation, the velocity in the x direction equals the displacement in the x direction over the, over the change in time. Our June and the plane both have the same velocity in the x direction. We're talking about the exact same amount of time. That means their displacement in the x direction is going to be the same. So what happens here is, here we go, plane, our June. Our June is falling down. But the plane is directly above our June the entire time. So when our June slams into the vat of cherry gel, you could look up and say, wait, hi, plane. You could look it up right at the plane. So it would be directly right above him. Because the displacement in the x direction for the plane is the same. Jim? But it kind of seems like our June's like traveling farther than the plane. Aha! It kind of seems like our June is traveling farther. Is our June traveling farther? Yes. yes, you're correct. But his displacement in the x direction is the same. He is traveling along this arc. So he travels a larger distance because he is accelerated in the y direction. The plane is not accelerated at all in the y direction. So the plane actually travels a smaller distance. However, they have the same displacement in the x direction. It's splitting the x direction and the y direction up. You, you need to realize they are two separate things. He goes straight down. The plane is directly above him. When he slams into the vat of cherry jelly, he can look up, up at the plane and go, wee, hi, plane. Okay. So people did not like this. So what I have for you is a little video that I got from a Nova special. Uh, the specifics of what's going on are not all that important. The important piece to realize is that they're dropping something from a plane over water. This is, and the, the sound is irrelevant, so we have the plane, it's flying, and you can see they drop a projectile from the plane. Okay. So, taking a look at this, you can see they drop the projectile. Now, what's happening to the projectile, class? It's falling. It's falling. But you see how it's directly below the plane, right? Now, it is moving back just a little bit. Why? Air resistance. Air resistance. The truth is that there is air resistance, which is going to slow the plane down. But in this class, we can't really deal with that. So it would be moving at a constant velocity in the absence of air resistance. It's pretty close. You can see it's pretty close to directly below the plane, but not quite. Now, another question. What would, uh, where do we go? If you were in the plane watching Stunt Arjun fall from the plane, what would you see? What would he look like? 
Where would he? Where is he watched? What would happen to him? He would be getting smaller. He would just get smaller because he would just look like he was falling straight down to you from the perspective of the plane. So what we have here is another from the same thing. They're dropping this projectile from the plane, and what I like about it is that they show that view, and you can see that this object just goes straight down with respect to the plane. It does go back just a little bit because of air resistance, but essentially it goes straight down. So for those of you who were incredulous about my discussion about that, this is a little just visual proof that it actually does go 